Father, we thank you that, that all strength, all honor, the source of our life is you, Lord. The source of our strength, the source of our life, the source of everything inside of you, Lord. We thank you. In Christ alone, I place my trust and find my victory. We thank you, Lord, this evening. We know we open our hearts to you. We trust you that you will put something in our heart. The sovereign God is in, in our midst today. I believe supernaturally there is going to be a divine seed planted in our hearts, in our mind, in our spirit today that will alter the cause of our destiny, that will set us on the prophetic path. So we thank you this evening, oh God, that something fresh will happen to our hearts this morning, this evening. I want you to just take a, a few moments right now and just press into the spirit world and trust God. Put some, let's put some pressure on heaven this evening and let's trust God for something supernatural and say, God, I want to hold you like Jacob. I want to say until, until you change me, until you change me, I'm not going to let you go. Until you bless me, until something fresh happen in my heart, I am not going to let you go. So we thank you, God. We praise you. We ask you something, oh God. We ask for something fresh to enter our hearts, enter our minds, oh God. Change the course. Change the cause of our lives, oh God, until Christ manifests in every word, in every sentence, in every breath, in every thought, in every aspect, in every aspect of our life, oh Father. It's no longer we that live. It's no longer I that live, but Christ that lives in me, the life which I now live. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So Father, we thank you. We thank you. We love you. We honor you. And we thank you for the upper room, oh God. We are so honored. We are so grateful to you, Lord, for this moment that we are together, that we are going to hear your word. We love you. We honor you. And all God's people say, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. A very warm welcome to each and every one of you from all different parts of the world and all different times of the day. We appreciate you for being with us in the um, upper room. You are in the upper room. Do you believe that? I said, do you believe that? Hallelujah. You know, I really want to appreciate so many of you, um, the ANS team, you know, as they, as they, uh, as you're worshiping, you are also worshiping along, uh, online. And that's really, really great to see because, you know, um, in this, in this season, we, 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 we joined many different conferences of many different, uh, movements and stuff like that. But, most of them are spectators, but we are not spectators. We are partakers, amen? We are partakers of divine nature. We'll never ever be a spectator. We will never be a consumer. We will never have a consumer mentality, but we have a contributor mentality all the time, contributing, pushing towards heaven, believing for something fresh. Hallelujah, amen. You know, in two uh, Papa, um, to declare, and began to give us a prophetic word, the double decade of open heaven. Hallelujah. When I heard that, I was so excited because in my mind and in my heart, the way that I interpreted the double decade of open heaven was, wow, maybe it's a new house. Maybe it's a new car. Exciting double decade of open heaven. But then I realized that, I don't know, I don't know, maybe I'm the only sinner here who thinks like that. But, you know, oh, thank you. Some of you are confessing your sin together with me now. You know, when we hear these words, we always think, we always, we, the self always wants to partake and we interpret what we hear according to what is inside of our heart. Our heart is always taking us in the wrong direction because it is full of self. But as I began to look at the scriptures and I began to look at the concept of the open heaven from the scriptures, we can see that every time heaven opened, Let's start from the book. Let's start from Genesis chapter 12. When God opened the heaven for Abraham and spoke to him, it was not about Abraham. It was the formation of a nation. It was him becoming the father of a nation. And then you go to Isaac. There was an open heaven over Isaac. There's an open heaven over Jacob. Every time there was an open heaven, it was not about them. It was about the purposes of God. It was about the plans of God. It was about the destiny of nation. It was the destiny of Israel. And what God wanted to do. And then you go down and you see there was an open heaven over the life of Joseph. And what was it about? It was always something bigger beyond our own selves. The double decade of open heaven. Then you see the life of Moses. There's an open heaven over the lives of Moses. And what was it about? It was about challenge. Every time there is a double decade of open heaven. Every time there's an open heaven in the Bible. Sorry. Every time it is a time of challenge. 
I say again, it's time for challenge. It's not for us to receive more, to have more, to take more for ourselves, to receive more. No, no. Every time there is a open heaven, what they were, they they needed to get ready to challenge. Every time there was an open heaven over Moses and Gideon and Daniel and Samuel, keep on looking throughout the scripture and you will find the same pattern exists, the same line, the same thread exists from, from Genesis to Revelation. Every time you see an open heaven, you can see that it, it's a time. It is a time of challenge. I want to say to us, I want to say to us that, you know, ever since the COVID has come, it is the beginning of the end. It is the beginning of the rising of the full manifestation of the spirit of Antichrist. Antichrist means the, 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 the atmosphere. Like Papa shared last week, he talked about the, the in, in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 2. He talks about the cause of the world. The cause of the world is getting more and more difficult. But we thank God. God has declared to us before any trouble, there was a 20 years. God promised 20 years of open heaven. Why? Because we know we have to minister. We have to live under the open heaven. The open heaven is for challenge. I say the open heaven is for challenge. That's why the church must be re redefined. We must be redefined. The way we think must be, we must be redefined. We cannot continue the old way. We have to now be redefined in the open heaven. The first thing that happens under the open heaven, the man that is under the open heaven is first. He first is changed. And when he's changed, you can see there is a people movement that begins. The spirit begins to be transferred, transmitted. The nature of the open heaven is now on the ground. The flesh, now, sorry, the, the word became flesh and dwelt among men. That's what must begin to happen in our lives. I want to turn our attention to one scripture, attention to one scripture, Isaiah 59 and uh, verse 19. Isaiah 59 and verse 19. Isaiah 59 verse 19, say, they say, So they shall fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy comes in like a flood, you know, flood has got no warning. It suddenly comes. The COVID suddenly came. No warning. We were caught off guard. It's like that. The enemy came in you can put in bracket there, like a COVID. It was like a flood. It suddenly hit us, unaware, right? Like a flood. The spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard. Hallelujah. Amen. I said the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard. That's a promise. God is not a man that he should lie. The Bible says the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. Amen. Say with me, the spirit of the Lord. Say it like it's, a, like it's real. The spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard. Okay, maybe you should say the Malaysian way with your fist showing me. The spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard. Okay, I can hear you, although... I can hear you in the spirit. Hallelujah. But listen, the Bible says to us that when the flood comes, God will raise us even higher. I said, God will raise us even higher. What does this mean? That means there is now a new standard of living. There's a new standard. God have to redefine everything about our life. God have to redefine the way we think. God have to redefine our perspective. God have to redefine our uh, our perception. God have to redefine the, the prophetic elements in our life. It has to be redefined. Everything has to be redefined. That's why it's important. It, it, it's important to know that this is the time. This is the season for us. This is the season for us that this is the season for us that is that that is a, a time for God to lift up a standard. The Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against Him. Amen. That's why we cannot, whatever, you, you know what? The deception is we live by our own standard. That's a deception, right? For some people, the deception is if I pray 15 minutes is enough. For some people, the deception is if I, if I, if I go to church once a week, it's enough. If I come to upper room, it's enough. 
you know, if I decide to stay an online church and not go back to physical, it's enough. So you, we all have personal standards, but I believe there is an equalization that is coming by the spirit of truth in our lives that is going to cause the standard to be the same everywhere, everywhere. God is going to be causing the standard to be same everywhere. So that's why it's important for us to begin to, to understand what we are receiving every Tuesday is God is lifting up a standard. Amen. Let us not be hearers. Let us not just be hearers of the word, but let's begin to know that there is a standard of God's word, the spirit of truth. Let it come upon you. We're just going to, we're just going to use one more song as uh, before Papa comes. And this song is because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Amen. Because he lives, all fear is gone. That's the standard God is raising. The fear is gone. Hallelujah. I said the fear is gone because he lives. I know he holds my future and life is worth a living just because he lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Oh, hallelujah. Because he lives. All fear. All fear is gone. We rebuke every spirit of fear in Jesus' name. Because I know, I know He holds my future. Hallelujah! And life is worth a living just because He lives. Because He. Sign to the future because of fear, of fear, we paralyze every fear. fear is because I know, I know, he holds my future.
we worship you, oh God. Everybody worship him. Sing a new song that day. Let the heaven be open. stand by me. There is a place by me, says God. Do not dwell among the people, for you will become like the people. Do not dwell in the place of what people are saying. Come and stand by me, because there is a place by me, says God, that I have prepared for you. As you stand by me, you will have my perspectives. As you stand by me, you will have my authority. As you stand by me, you will have the grace that will flow from the throne. Uh, there is a new day that is coming. I say there is a new day. There is a new season that is coming upon each and every one. In this season, I sense in my spirit, God is igniting the prophetic. God is beginning to ignite the prophetic dimensions. A lot of the prophetic dimensions have been cut because of the COVID, because of fear. So many different frequencies. But I want to let you know, because he lives, we can face tomorrow because he lived. We know the future. Living by the future is the prophetic. I prophesy to you today that you will be able to see once again. You'll be able to perceive once again. You'll be able to pick up once again. You'll be able to know once again everything that God is saying in the future. And you will live in the present according to the future. Father, we thank you this evening. We praise you. We love you. We thank you, God that we will stand by you because there is a place by you. We love you, we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah, give him praise, amen, amen. Hallelujah, I'm gonna pass the time to Papa and I pray that you and I will have seeing ears, hearing, uh, hearing ears, seeing eyes, hearing ears, and a discerning heart. God bless you, over to you there. Hi, hi everyone. I believe that something supernatural is about to happen. We've been, we've been talking about dethroning the prince of the power of the air. Let's go straight into the scriptures in, Act, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2. In which you formerly walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air of the spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience. We are taking the battle to the next level. I said we are taking this battle to the next level. Every battle is winnable, but we got to win it in the spirit. Or else the same demons bring back seven others, and the place will be worse than when we first began. But tonight I'm going to show you how to dethrone the works of the enemy. Everything that he is planned, that's not matter. It's what you have planned that matters. Remember I told you last week 
that when your prayer and your praise rises above your pain, you are on your way to a miracle. I'm telling you, many people are suffering. They are going through difficult times, even in the church, pastors, leaders. You know, there's a compassion of God that's coming upon the, our nations. All the nations, sometimes we see cyclone, we see floods, we see earthquakes and all kinds of things happening. The earth is groaning so that the sons of God will manifest again. I'm telling you that God is wanting you to dethrone the prince of the powers of the air. And the fastest way to do this is what I'm going to share with you tonight. The cause of this world is controlled by the prince of the power of the air through the spirit influence on the sons of disobedience. Wherever there are a company of people who don't want to do God's will, they are beginning to do the devil's will. It's black or white. We have to make a choice. The, the enemy will try his very best to throw a spanner in you, at you, so that when, when you want to break forth, that's the time the enemy attacks you. But I'm telling you, you, you should not be afraid because you must know what strength he still has, what limitations the devil has, what kind of resources he has, how, how your enemy lives. The Bible tells us that God cast him out of, of, of heaven and he was cast into the heavenly places. And the Bible says when Jesus rose again, that we have been seated with him far above principalities and powers. Not just demons, principalities and powers. That's the reason why you, you need to hear what you need to hear this week. The spirit influence moves through the manner of lifestyle. The lifestyle of people have changed so much. You know, the way they treat one another, the way they scheme and connive and are more crafty than the serpent. But I, I sense in my spirit that we're no longer going to be like the Gentiles. No longer walk as Gentiles. No longer walk in the futility of our mind. Because what you see is deception. The whole world is under the deception of the enemy and all the activities that he moves through our lives can be traced back to, to the garden and how he behaved. I'm challenging you today that we must cut off the spirit influence. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 2 tells us that, that the work of the enemy is to deceive us. But how is he going to deceive without a spirit of deception coming? So he sends a spirit of deception to work in the sons of disobedience. If you and I choose to walk in obedience, that's the thing that the enemy doesn't want. Jesus was on planet earth. What did he do? He learned obedience. So what is the devil looking for? He's looking for those who will be disobedient. Those who choose not to go all the way and they become instruments of the enemy. I'm sorry to tell you, but this is a fact. In the last days, families will be divided. In the last days, homes will be divided. Marriages will be divided because of listening to doctrines of demons and deceitfulness of, the, of riches and desiring other things. So I want, I want to put this if, it, if this is the last few sermons that we're going to have for, for the year, this is one of the most vital ones. You've got to cut off the powers of the air. You've got to stop their spirit influence. And I'm going to show you that when the lifestyle of people begin to become more and more predictable, the devil knows exactly how to set you up. He knows your past, but he doesn't know your future. He knows your past. Other people know your past also. But, but the devil doesn't know the future. Because if he knew, then he would have actually stopped trying to do anything with Jesus and let Jesus live forever on planet Earth. But he put him to, to the cross because he thought, hey, if I do that, there will be no more followers. 
and the synagogues won't be empty. God is good to us. Is somebody shouting amen? A, the spirit influence operates effectively on falsehood, deceit, and lies. In, in the book of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 25, Are you there? Therefore, laying aside falsehood, speak truth to each one of you with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. That is, in reference to your former manner of life, you lay aside the old self, which is corrupted in accordance with the lust of, the, of deceit. Wherever deception goes, demons travel. That is the passage way for them. The Bible says they are deceived and being deceived. So there are many levels of deception. The worst is, the worst of all is self-deception. Is to, is to think highly of yourself, more highly of yourself than any other. So are you ready to go straight into it? I'm going to talk to you the hierarchy of the, of, of the devil so that you know what, what is about to happen. The power of the air below, verse 21, chapter 1, verse 21, Far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. What God wants you to do and understand is this. You overcome the devil on this level, in the physical level, then you go to the place where the spiritual realm manif manifests. Then you can see he was up in the heavens, but he was cast down. Why? Because God found a man, formed a man and made a man and said to him that if you truly will love me and honor me and do what, what, I, you, what, what I teach you according to the plans and purposes of God, what is going to happen is when God finds that one man who totally yields to him, he reveals the secrets of, 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 of heaven to the person. That's why you, you can see how Abraham unlocked the dimensions of the spirit. Even in, he could intercede for Sodom and Gomorrah. Just one man, just one, one lady had been changed supernaturally by God, turned the whole city of Samaria around. You have Stephen, you have Philip. Philip goes to Samaria and the whole city rejoices. There is coming a time when the Spirit of God is going to move so powerfully that the heathen, the world, the people in the world will thank God for the church. The church that is rising up. You must not be afraid because the powers of the air can be disconnected. Power supply can be cut off. And how do you do that? So you got to trace these three things, four important dimensions of demonic powers. Are you ready? I didn't hear you. No, I don't want you to unmute yourself. You better remain just mute. Come, come, come with me. You know, I have so much prepared for you. I wish we had more time. We have a long time and eternity, but we will be talking different things. But now is the time. The first spirit I want to identify for you is the familiar spirit. I want you to go, go with me to the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 11.
in, in verse, verse 12. From the days of John the Baptist until now. Everybody say, until now. The kingdom of heaven suffer violence, and violent men take it by force. The Bible is very clear that the kingdom of heaven could not come down until the king came. He made the pathway so that the Holy Spirit can begin to bring his kingdom onto planet Earth. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the time that Jesus was speaking, what actually happened was the Holy Spirit came but could not rest on the planet Earth. He, he, he fell upon Samson. Samson's anointing killed the Philistines. Then he fell into sin and God raised up Joshua. And he raised up different people different, with different grace so that they'd be able to understand that the kingdom of heaven is suffering violence. Until now, why, when Jesus came, he overturned the power, power equation. Instead of the devil oppressing us, we are to oppress him. You know, the problem with, with church is many of us are sponsoring the devil to extend his vacation here on earth. The reason, the reason why we started the upper room is so that you can be connected to all that is happening in the heavens. Familiar spirit. Let's, let's look at that. In verse 27 of chapter 12, verse 26, If Satan casts out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then will this king, his kingdom stand? The devil understands what it means to cut it. it means to I want you to lift your hands and pray, pray for me now, right now. Because I've been carrying this burden too long. It's you who are the generation that will cross over. Just like David, God has shown him that his, his term ends. And Solomon begins to rise and travel. A new thing is coming upon your life. The spirit of darkness operating in your city, in your nation, uses spiritual power to deal with the sons of disobedience and use them to sabotage whatever the kingdom of God is manifesting. The familiar spirit is a spirit that hangs around your life. And he knows, he knows everything about your past. Where is the scripture that says that one demon will bring in seven others and the others become worse? All right, maybe, maybe we should turn to this scripture, find out. In verse 28, but if I cast chapter 12 of Matthew chapter 12, verse 27, 26. Satan casts out Satan, he divided himself against his own kingdom. 28. But if I by this cast out demons by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. How can anyone enter the strong man's house and, and carry his property unless he first binds the strong man and then he will plunder the house? We are dealing with strong demonic powers. The prince of the power of the air is Satan himself. And he has drawn the course for the earth. Because the whole world lies in 
darkness. The whole world lies in deception. In the midst of all of that, we have revelation coming to us. In the midst of all that is control, one lady said to me, I think I have the spirit of rejection in my life. I said, how, how do you know? She said, I read some books by so many different people. She mentioned the names and the title of the books. And then what happened? I, I said, I said what, what, why do you think so? She, she said, I just discovered that my mother went to see the doctor to abort me at six months. Are you hearing me? Can you hear me well? I'm a bit softer and slower today because I believe in God for a supernatural miracle just like you are believing God. We stand on the same ground. There's no special treatment for you or for me or because you're Chinese or you're Indian or Filipino. We are here because we not only share in his sufferings, but also in his glory. If the amount of suffering that I've gone through over the last few weeks, I think there's going to be great glory, not just over my head, but over my whole body. Let me take you to the chapter, chapter 12, verse 43. Let me make it straight to you that Christians cannot be demon-possessed. Those who live righteously, living in the dimension of the Spirit, no demon can enter into your body because your body is bought with his blood and the Holy Spirit fills your body as his temple. So let's look at this familiar spirit. A familiar spirit is a spirit that's familiar with a person, a place or a thing. This has become, the, these spirits have become accustomed to your lifestyle, moods and behavior. And they, they, just like we have guardian angels, the demonic powers that are assigned, especially if you have a significant life in the future. So you're strategic. You remember that the devil already had Judas Iscariot. But Jesus said, I pray that Satan's power will be broken, that you, will, you won't set your mind on human interest, but on God's interest. He was looking for Peter. The real target was Peter, not Judas. Judas has already been bought. The devil entered into his heart, and that was the beginning of the end. But you know what happened? The Bible says that Jesus said to Peter, Peter, I prayed for you. I've covered you in prayer so that when you are converted, you rise up and help the other and strengthen the brethren. Prayer is a very powerful force. It's a very powerful force of heaven. It is a thing that opens heaven and shuts heaven. Our Father who art in heaven makes heaven very important because the Father is there. And dimensions of the spirit of darkness will be bound in your, in, in your life. I, I believe the next five, five, six, six, uh, five or six more uh, upper room sessions like this will actually going to help us. In the five weeks, I want to make sure that you understand the spirit world so well so that you can walk out of the traps of the enemy. And not only that, but by God using you in your nation, in your city, the powers of darkness will be exposed. Somebody said, but President Donald Trump, Trump did not win. That's debate, debatable. But what has happened after that is more frightening than you can ever think. So many things have been exposed. So many lies and so many 
hopeless situations have been created. But God is going to do a new work in His church. The Holy Spirit is going to take you to the next level. That's why you need to stop this spirit called the family spirit in your life now. Come to chapter 12. Because if you're going to teach, you teach. You want to preach, you preach. If you don't want to do anything, you go home. But I want you to listen carefully. Matthew chapter 12, verse 43. Now when the unclean spirit goes out of a man, it passes through waterless places seeking rest and does not find it. Then he says, I will return to my house from which I came. When he comes, it finds it unoccupied, swept and put in order. Then he goes and takes along seven of his other friends, more wicked than itself and go in and live there. And the last state of the man becomes worse than the first. This is the way with this evil generation. I want, I want you to be very clear in your own heart that they, this is speaking about an evil generation. Not, not about Christians, not about you, but an evil generation, un, unless you are a part of the evil gen generation. The demonic powers cannot touch your life. The one that goes in and out is the familiar spirit. He is the access code for satanic powers to enter into the region, into your life, to bring in death, to bring in darkness, to bring in deceit, to bring in uh, deception. This is the spirit. If you shut the power of the familiar spirit, you cut off the supply line. That's why you need to identify this. I don't want to be preaching. I can preach from any part of the Bible. But I want you to listen carefully and understand the burden of my heart. Prayer has been lost. We say that in America, God is not, not in control. He is not absolute. He is not the highest power. He is just a metaphysic, physical thing or some kind of a idol or some kind of a spirit moving around. But when you remove God from, from the schools, you remove all absolutes. If you remove God and God's word, you lose all rest. The, the rest of the nation will be born. No God, no absolutes. No God, then, then there is no man. So man, so God is not involved, so many evolve from monkeys. I don't know who came up with the theory. All right. Charles Darwin, he also confessed before he died that he was not a monkey. You must be careful because now you have a man and another man. This is my wife. I'm the husband. The reason why I'm telling you this is because we have allowed the familiar spirit to continue to live around our life. It will attract seven others worse than itself. Look at what he says to us. Now the unclean spirit goes out of a man. That means it's a free passageway. You don't deal with the devil. You tolerate him. You accommodate him. When the enemy attacks you, you don't fight back. The spirit will stay. Familiar spirit is the is the only one that can open up the door for others. Write down number one. Familiar spirits have become familiar with the person's lifestyle, mood and behavior patterns. Please learn this. Learn it well. 
because it's no use going to the doctor. I've been to doc so many doctors and, and the, some of them said, we don't know what's your problem, but we know there is a problem. And we have a name for the problem, but we don't know what causes it. One recently told me that, that surely I've given you all the medicine I know. If this doesn't work, I don't know what else will work. The world is living without hope, without answers. But God is sending us by the Spirit. You will understand this because I'm going to pray for you to have a discerning spirit so that you can discern the human spirit, you can discern the Holy Spirit, you can discern the spirit of man, and you can discern the spirit of darkness. So the whole spiritual realm is going to be covered by some great manifestation of the Holy Spirit in your life. The familiar spirit knows the person. He studies the person and he knows his weakness. You know what part of the month he is weak, what part of the period of time he is afraid. Like some people have a headache just after they have received their pay. Because by looking at it, they begin to realize it is insufficient and fear starts to come. But, but they are, they are just, just being paid. But what, what is the reason why it happens? Because the familiar spirit knows that this, he has to act in the same way all the time so that they can be in control of what happens in the future of the house. Familiar spirits study your pattern. They learn to work around the person's character. That's why sometimes you do not know when somebody is angry, and they're shouting and they're fighting you. You can see the change in, in the voice, in the face, in the spirit dimension. You can actually weigh and measure the demonic influence. Familiar spirit have become familiar with a person's lifestyle, in moods, and behavioral pattern. Number two. Familiar spirits open the door to other spirits to invade your life. I'll say it again, familiar spirits open doors for other spirits to invade into your life. That's why the Bible says when one unclean spirit goes out of the man, passes through waterless places, that's why you've got to be properly hydrated with the power of the Holy Ghost. You must live a life where there's river is flowing. When the river is flowing, then the, the, the enemy cannot come in because like a flood, God will raise up a standard against him. And supernatural things will happen because when you are filled with the Holy Spirit and water is flowing in your life, the enemy is not going to be there because he is looking for Waterless places, say waterless places. This is, this is important because the familiar spirit is looking for somebody who is unrepentant, who is looking for somebody who is who has bad relationships. He works with people who are disobedient, sons of wrath, sons of disobedience. Ephesians chapter Chapter, chapter 2, how many, how many will say with me till the end of the year? I, pro I promise you that something supernatural is about to happen. I may be going slow tonight, but that doesn't matter. Slow is not the matter. We don't do disobedience is the matter. When we formerly walk, we walk in the lust of the flesh, and for that reason we become disobedient. But what happens is that, but God being rich in mercy, because of the love with which He loved us, 
even when we were dead in our trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ, raised him up and seated us with him in the heavenly places, so that in the ages to come he might sup he might show surpassing riches of his grace in kindness in Christ Jesus. Remember the devil has plans. He's been on planet earth for 6,000 years. He knows every look, look and corner. Familiar spirits, when you allow them to get close to you, they strategize, they plan for other spirits to invade. Please, this, this, don't take these things out of context because I'm not devil conscious. I'm God conscious. I'm people conscious. I've seen enough sufferings to tell you straight in your face that you know nuts about it if you continually allow the work of the enemy. Something, something powerful is about to happen. I remember talking to somebody just over the lunch table I said that woman who said she had a spirit of a rejection in her life was 35 years old in Brisbane, Australia. I said to her, your mother, the doctor, the devil, all tried to kill you while you're still in your mother's womb. But you have been born you have lived 35 years. How can that be? So I said to her, then she said, what, what, is, what is the analysis? I said, you don't have the spirit of rejection. You have the spirit of resurrection. I said, you have the spirit of resurrection. That's why in the days to come, false doctrine will run very quickly. For many years, I thought, that the white horse was Jesus. This one confession I need to make. In the book of Re Revelation chapter 5 or chapter 6. It says the, the man riding the white horse conquering and conquering and conquering. The devil has found an op opportunity. Let me rephrase this. Satan, what did I say? Satan saw a window of opportunity and opened the gates of hell. Be clear in your mind that things that are happening around isn't, doesn't just happen like that. Most of the viruses are man planted device. God wants us to be clear so that we get out from Babylon. Because you cannot fulfill your dream in Babylon. You can sing the song, but I hope you don't get trapped by it. The reason because Babylon is going to collapse. The demonic kingdom is going to be shattered. He will cling on to power as much as he can, as long as he can, as strong as he can. But our job, if we choose to take this mission, our job is to make sure that the Spirit of God flows through our life. In chapter Chapter 6 of Revelation 6, verse 2. I looked and behold a white horse, and he had a bow in his hand, and a crown was given to him, and he went on conquering and conquering. Even though it's a white horse, white represents purity, but this one, there are four of them, red horse, one, what are the colors is that? Purple is my favorite color, but it's not there. There. Uh, 
Asian, Asian color, black horse, red horse, white horse. I truly believe, I truly believe that the white horse is what's riding now in this hour. After that, there's going to be a tank of famines. The red horse went out. Second seal was war. Another red horse went out, and to him it was granted to, to take peace from the earth. The men would slay one another. And great sword was was with him. Stretch your hands this morning. I pray that God will save you from unnecessary trials. My heart is so burdened as I see nations falling under the power. Or powers to be. A pandemic is all that we know. The virus has gone and separated husband and wife, separated families, separated all kinds of things that were intact before. Now they they're not only persecuting you. You want to make your life difficult. God is in control. I'm telling you, friends, God is going to honor those who have honored Him. In this season, of all the sorrows that we are going through, He is in control. The familiar spirits can only operate in a life that is waterless. The satanic powers will never rise again and populate the earth. The reason is because there is a dimension of God in the church. I say all the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Okay. Look, look, look at that verse in 43. Matthew 13, Matthew 12, 43. Unclean, unclean spirit goes out of a man, passes through waterless places seeking rest, and does not, does not find it. Then he says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes, it finish, finds it unoccupied, swept, put in order. You can do so many things, but not everything that you do stops the devil from coming. The reason is because we don't know how the demons operate. They look for waterless places. They claim possession of your life as though it's their house. God by the Spirit says that if, if this continues, if this continues, then you bring in seven others more worse than him. I feel that when we make the right decisions, God creates a pathway in the spirit world so that you not only Finish what you are told to do, but you will have grace to do more and more. Somehow your life gets cut off from the works of the enemy and a new life begins. I can see many of your lives are going to change so drastically that the powers of the enemy cannot work through. Look at Peter. Say, 
Thou art the Christ, the Son of the Living God. And then he turns around and is in the same chapter. The Bible says that he rebuked Jesus for wanting to go to the cross and die. Because he thought I made a lot of investment, my time, I left my wife, I left my mother-in-law with the, with the sheep. But God is good to us. That in such a time as this, we realize that Jesus showed us that a person who is speaking by the Spirit can be easily tempted. And be easily tempted to switch to another channel. He said, the moment you, chapter 16, let's look at it. Then I'm going to show you the spirit of intimidation. Let's finish. In the book of Matthew 16, Verse 22. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this shall never happen to you. But he, Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You're a stumbling block to me, for you are a you're setting your mind on God, on man's interests, not God's. The moment you change your focus, the moment you change your purpose, the moment you change your priority, demons will take over. But if you say no, even if you're non-Christian, demons cannot touch you. I grew up in the temple and I can see many times that this demonic spirit wants to possess them, but they keep resisting, re resisting, and the demons cannot go inside. But the demons, when they enter into the person, it creates all kinds of confusion. Sometimes he thinks he's awake, but he's asleep. Sometimes he thinks he's asleep, but he's awake. The whole time clock change, body clock change, because when the devil comes into a person's life, in his mind, in his spirit, in his body, the devil will attempt to bring death because the wages of sin is death. The familiar spirit's work is to let other demon powers enter in. That's why the familiar spirit is the, the, the only one, like a master key, the spirit becomes stronger and stronger if your lifestyle don't change. It takes more authority over your life, over your family, over your finances. Imagine on the day where you get your salary, they start to quarrel. When they are talking to each other, they start to fight. This kind of dimensions of darkness is going to become more evident. In the future, you're going to have so many people having neuro problems, mind problems, fears, phobia, all kinds of human limit limitation. If you start tonight, and change your lifestyle, the familiar spirit will not be familiar with you anymore. Or he is not familiar with your change. And so a lot of doors will be shut. Maybe you have, you have the spirit of lust, for example. The, the enemy that is behind it is a familiar spirit who brought in a spirit of lust. And you can see the, how dangerous it is. I'm telling you, 
I hope our eyes do not see the kind of trouble the church will be in in the future. If you start today, the healing power of God will come upon your life and heal you immediately. The supernatural dimensions from heaven will fall in upon your life in a such a powerful way that you have a fresh new start because God is the God of a second chance. God is going to open up opportunities, especially the, the 1,200 of you who are hearing and continue to hear. The familiar spirit is a spirit that gives entrance to others. He give, the, give them the password. If I know the alarm in your, in your house is 10004, when I enter in, I can actually take things in your house. A strong man in, in a strong house. But the Bible says when you become stronger, you can overcome the strong man. Yeah, I see this thing happening in the nations. In the next few years, three to five years, nations are going to change. The ones who are going to rise are going to be women and sons and daughters. There's a movement called People Movement among young people. They're not only going to change the destiny of the nation through the election, but they're also going to change the destiny of their own lives by pursuing what God wants them to pursue. Do you have a recurring thought that continually oppresses you? Do you have a cycle of defeat? Every time you try or want to try something in God, the enemy comes in and pulls you down and you feel sad and sorrowful and don't want to do that anymore. But today is your day of deliverance. I said in the name of Jesus, every familiar spirit that's familiar with you will be cut off in its flow, in its work. And thereby, by shutting down the familiar spirit, you stop other spirits from entering in. Oh, I'm telling you, I can feel the demonic power being broken. In the name of Jesus, I speak health and healing. The virtue of God's power flow through your life. In Jesus' name. I've been bought with the blood, standing in his name to represent him. This is going to be your, your, your chance to have a better life. Greater flow of finance. Greater power to influence will become your portion. Jesus, I believe, is wanting to become formed and shaped in your life so that the Holy Spirit can fall afresh. There's a new wave coming. I said, hallelujah, I said a new wave is coming. And you must get ready for this new wave is going to be a new way of doing things. May I introduce to you the discerning of spirits, the gift of the discerning of spirits, so that you can discern false doctrine. You can discern false prophets. You can discern evil spirits present. You can discern human spirits at what level they are. The spirits of righteous men are made perfect by the power of the Holy Spirit. I believe you and I are going to see tonight that the familiar spirit will stop functioning because you are repentant, you are changed, you are not predictable, you are not following a certain course of self-interest actions. The power of the Spirit of God will help us. And when you stop the familiar spirit operating in your life, he will lose his code. 
and he goes around to waterless places. See, see if he could find somebody who will open their heart to, to negative things and then enter in, continue to be there until they come into a place of real destruction. Can I also say this, number three, familiar spirits are responsible to transfer a problem, a sickness, or a curse from one generation to another. I know I'm shocking you today, but it's good. You better wake up. The church must wake up. Familiar spirits are responsible to transfer a problem, a sickness, a curse, from one generation to another. Spirits do not die, so they may be staying in that house for a long time. Father died of a heart attack. He expects to die in, on, on a heart attack too. A lot of fam, 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 family members are attacked by the same, same style and action by which the enemy wants to oppress your life. Familiar spirits in the church I can say let's stand but I don't want you to be in trouble. Say after me familiar spirits control negative emotional cycles. A control outbursts of anger, depression, swings of mood, bitterness. Familiar spirits control regular negative emotional cycles. You will you begin to find this the more you begin to live live life in the spirit. Live life in the spirit. You will discern the spirit of darkness better and better and better. What I'm saying to you now may sound way off the road. But let me warn you, the devil is a deceiver. He's a liar. His first line of attack is, did God say that? Did God say this? So you better know the scripture well. Christians cannot be possessed. They can be obsessed. They can be oppressed. They can be depressed. You know, they can function in so many different ways but the Spirit of God is upon our life. Emotional cycles. They control the thought pattern to, that governs this area so that we see no reason to change. These areas are seen as weapons we can use to our benefit instead of calling it sin. Stretch your hands tonight. I feel sorry for you if you think that this is not what God wants this morning. The reason he told me why the devil is attacking so fiercely is because there's a great destiny waiting for you. An assignment far bigger than you ever thought before. The Spirit of God is falling right upon you right now. Lift your hands and begin to pray in tongues. Go on, go on, go on. Go on. I feel like a surgeon working on a body to, for surgery. To take off the bad things inside so that you can start to live longer, stronger, more consistent in your love for Christ and totally sold out for the kingdom of God. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that the power of the familiar spirit over our life will be cut off right now so that we do not subject ourselves to the powers of the air, the prince of the powers of the air. I thank you right now the healing in is going to become permanent. Results are going to be consistent. 
No familiar spirit will continue to open up the doors for worse and worse things to happen. If you have fear in your heart that the sin of one generation is carried to another, don't be afraid because that curse does not work on Christians. The Bible says, he who sins will pay the price. You cannot destroy the son because of the father. You cannot destroy the father because of the son. Each one is responsible unto his own. Familiar spirits are dangerous because they live in our house. If we are not responsive, they live in our body. The Spirit of God shows me right now that you were walking somewhere and it was a little bit dark and suddenly you got frightened by a cat running across. You thought it was some kind of wild animal and you got frightened and you tripped and fell backwards and hurt your hip. The Lord shows me that He is healing you right now, giving you light, giving you power, giving you strength so that you can rise up into the next level in the name of Jesus. Be healed right now. Let the power of the Spirit of God fall afresh upon you that you will no longer fear darkness in Jesus' name. No longer fear darkness. You no longer fear darkness right now, right now. Yes, yes. Let the power of the Holy Spirit fall upon you right now. Pray in tongues. Pray in tongues. Pray in tongues. Let the Holy Spirit intercede for you with words too deep to understand. But the Holy Spirit is working, is laboring, is moving. He's speaking, he's talking, he's challenging. Oh, shikari yara bala bala shandari andara bala 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 shakari andari 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 shikari andara. Oh, riyara lala ma shakari andara andara shikari yara bala ma. Lili bibi shikari yara bala shakari andara. Oh, shikari andara. Cut off the influence of this spirit. Keep changing in your life. Consistently, kidnappers have been told, or they tell others, they have studied that man's house for one year. They plan a year ahead, so that they, at any time, you see, they send the children to tuition at four o'clock, four o'clock. Then he is in, in the shower at seven. Then he is walking into the veranda, reading newspaper. They study every aspect of your life. You know, we are not as diligent as the devil's people. They are consistently following what is in their spirit and in their heart. Tonight, I want you to know that wisdom, the discerning of spirits is going to be so powerful. Maybe you should lift your hands right now. Lift your hands right now and let allow the Spirit of God to flow through your life. Father, I cut off every familiar spirit so that the Prince of the Power of the Air has no spirit to enter, to hold back the church. I thank you that the church has been given such authority and power that in the days to come, we will overcome every work of the enemy. Thank you, Lord, that our hands are stronger. Our mind is clearer. Our hearts are more passionate, intense. Because a new day is coming. A new way is opening up for us. We ask of you right now in Jesus' name that you will do a new work in the Spirit right now. Right now, right now, right now, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I pray His power will be broken right now. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, let His power be broken right now. That there is no spirit connection between the powers, the prince of the powers of the air and your life. You will be obedient. You will serve the Lord. You will... Give him all the glory and honor and the credit for raising you up in this hour. Shikiri ala la ma sandari andara ma. Shikiri ala la la shikiri ala ma la ma sandari andara. 
I don't want you to be afraid. I say, I don't want you to be afraid of what the devil can do. The devil has plans, he has schemes. There's an evil day coming. But in the midst of all of that, God is going to protect you, guard you, guide you, give you the spirit of revelation, understanding, wisdom will be your portion. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. The second spirit I want to show you is the spirit of intimidation. Most people are paralyzed. Most people are paralyzed with the spirit of intimidation. Are you ready? Write this down. Sorry, Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 2 to 3. I'm going to show you what this spirit of intimidation is doing to the church. Not because the church is weak, the church is strong. But you can be also be deceived. Strength is not always the lack of deception. Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 2 to 3. And he spoke in the presence of his brothers and the wealthy men of Samaria and said, What are these feeble Jews doing? Are they going to restore it for themselves? Can they offer sacrifices? Can they finish, in, finish it in a day? Can they revive the stones from the dusty rubble, even the burnt ones? Now Tobiah, the Ammonite, was near him and said, Even what they are building, if a fox should jump on it, he would break their stone wall down. Do not forgive them for the iniquity. Let not their sin be blotted out before thee, for they have demoralized the builders. He's talking about how those who want to serve God always find this attack upon their own life. The spirit of intimidation. And there are five major areas in our leadership that can be targeted by the spirit of intimidation. Let's read the first one. What are these feeble Jews doing? Number one, what are these feeble Jews doing? This is an attack on the nature and character of your life. The attack is on our nature and character. What are these feeble Jews doing? They're feeble, they're Jews. What are they doing? The attack is on their nature and character. Number two, 
The attack is on their attitude and motives. Are they going to restore it for themselves? Intimidation is a harassment of the devil upon a human life. The human person re rejects fights it, fights it, fights it, fights it, fights it, fight it, fight it for as long as he can. Then he caves in and starts blaming himself, condemning himself. And when you do that, you, be, you, you become attacked and become targeted by the others who are also dominating. And so in your family, you have too many casualties like this. The attack is on the character. What are these people just doing? Are they going to restore it for themselves? These are questions that are asked. But this is to intimidate the leader who is moving. I want you to be able to stand against every, every attack of the enemy, every power of darkness, any, any form of deception from the congregation. Because the days are coming when this spirit of intimidation will become very real. In fact, with COVID-19, it is more real than ever before. They want to put fear in your heart. They will not, not, not only put fear in your heart, but begin to put unrest in your mind. You don't feel secure, you don't feel stable, you don't feel uh, safe, you don't feel... You, you don't feel all these things that you, God wants you to have. You can have it. What is the attitude and motive? Number three. The third thing they're going to deal with is this. Can they offer sacrifices? The wealthy men of Samaria and Tobiah Sanbala, they attacked Nehemiah and said, can you offer sacrifice? Meaning, who offers sacrifice? Only the priests, only the Levites. So they are saying, you are not qualified for the job. You don't have a spiritual position. It was God who sent Nehemiah back to Judah. That came with a great cause. But the problem today is this. The enemy is attacking us in such a way to say you're not qualified. You won't be able to do this. You won't be empowered to do this. In fact, you don't have a spiritual position or stature. But I'm telling you tonight, the attack on our character, the attack on our attitudes and motives, the attack on our qualification and spiritual position are going to come down in Jesus' name. Believers are going to see that things are going to get better and better, sharper and sharper, stronger and stronger. Sometime in teaching sessions, we need to have notes so that we can follow through with things. When we start again in, in Jan January, we're going to make sure that those things come way ahead of time. You can register for the class so that we can, in the, in the days ahead, begin to share with you things that come on arrival. I have to wait for Tuesday is one whole week. In one week, Somebody could have died, grass growing on the grave. That's how, how long it is. But I'm praying that your second generation, your sons, your daughters, will continue to hear what God is saying. Because a new day is going to come. Don't let them attack you on your nature and character. Don't let them attack you on your attitude and motive. That means your attitude is pure. Will they restore it for themselves? They are not restoring it for themselves, they're restoring it because it's God's order, God's plan.
Can they offer sacrifices? This is the attack on your qualification, spiritual position. Then let's look at this one. Can they finish it in a day? How do you build it in a day? Can they do it? So the, the, the question they are asking is about their wisdom and zeal. That they are extremists. They are not, they are not real. They are non-functional in their head, actually. Can they, can they finish it in a day? They are trying to push themselves too hard. The devil will attack you one way or the other. But we got to have the right answers. Is they attack their wisdom. Say, how can you do it in a day? You are pushing the people too much. You are working them too hard. Where other churches do it? They don't do. Why must our church be the one doing it? So before long you find there's a lot of contention. People who want to come into your house, you cannot enter. They have to break the roof in order to come for Jesus' meeting. Why? Because the scribe has already come into the house and fill the place. And when Jesus was moving in the spirit and, and healing the, the man that was brought down from the rooftop, you know what happened? They said, who is he that can forgive sin? Only God can. So this man is blas blaspheming against the Holy Spirit. Where are the scribes? The scribes are inside. Where are the people who have faith? They are outside. They are on the rooftop. You have really misplaced your people. If you put the wrong person in the, in the job, it will come out wrong. If you're going to put the right person in the right job, the right place. This is going to be the beginning of our understanding. Lastly, can they revive the stones from the dusty rubble, even the burned ones? When stones are burned, they're black. You know, what happens is this, can they revive the stones from the dusty rubble, even the burned ones? This is a question about your ability. Can you do it or not? But they can do it because God is with them. I said they can do it because God is with them. Do you believe this? Talk to me. Do you believe this? The attack is going to be on, on the, our ability. They said, can you revive the stones? You, who are you to revive the stones? What have you got that you can use the, to change the rubble, even the burned ones? Let me in closing share something with you which is very important. Why did I talk to you about familiar spirits, intimidation, deception? Because this is the activity of the devil. That's why in most nations of the world, churches are not united. Many cities of the world, churches are not united. Unity is not conformity. Unity as a leader. I say unity has a leader. You cannot be all equal. If you want to have unity, you have to have some measure of structure that protects the church, the people from being abused by authority. I know that something supernatural is about to happen in my own life. Because the last few weeks, been struggling with pain, pain I've never felt before. Then I heard the voice of God. He said, when your praise and your prayer and your prophecy is, is, higher, is higher than the pain, a miracle is on the way. I want that miracle for you too. Familiar spirits, shut it down. Change your life so that they cannot predict you. 
kidnappers, they always study the, the victim for months, for, for some time, for years. Be watchful tonight because familiar spirits are the entrance point. Intimidation is the breaking point. The enemy harass and harass you, harass you again and again until your will to resist is lost. Then you begin to then you begin to say to yourself, "I'm not good. I'm not strong. I'm not this. I'm not that." Why does this thing happen? Because in the spirit of intimidation, some people use anger to intimidate others. Some parents do that to their children. Sometimes gangsters do it. Sometimes politicians do it. Sometimes the priests do it. Sometimes the people do it. All of us have a way of intimidating people. If you have a strong personality, See, many of them will be hurt and bruised. I know people who have been so hurt that they, they, they left the church. Some have left the town. Some have married non-Christians. Because intimidation forces you to betray your own convictions. The Spirit of God has to help you. Familiar spirits and spirits of intimidation is what I can share for you tonight. Do not let anyone come near you to intimidate you. Are you listening? Because the moment the spirit of the familiar spirit opens the door for the spirit of intimidation, what will happen is you will start to fight fight, 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 and then become weary. How many of you can honestly tell me that you're weary of high maintenance people? The only negative people that we like is from COVID-19. Right? You, you can see without a shadow of doubt that God is wanting you to stop what you should stop. The devil found a, door, a window of opportunity and opened the gates of hell. He who is, a, he who is an understanding of the prophetic hearkened to what I just said. The devil saw an opportunity in the world that he could slide his plans in. He has done it. That's why there's a lot of news and a lot of information coming out that we had never known before. I, I believe that your surrounding will begin to change and familiar spirits cannot live in that anymore. Change your way of thinking, change the way of your feelings, change the way you relate. Change. Renew your marriage vows. Are you listening? Assure your children, assure your family, because familiar spirits are so familiar that they can throw in the spanner anytime they want. But it cannot happen inside the kingdom of God. Your house is clean. Your house is free. Take your hands up into the heavens. Come on. The spirit of God is setting you free, setting your church free. So setting the atmosphere free from all the infiltration of the enemy. Every spirit familiar with us will no longer be familiar with, with us because we're going to change our life. We're going to go to the next level where there are no devils. We're going to go to the next level where it's God conscious, not sin conscious, not man pleases, but sons who, in whom he will be pleased. I believe these two, two demonic powers are highly in operation in this hour. 
intimidation. No, you cannot do this. No, you can't do that. You cannot do this. You can't do that. This is what you need to do. That's what you should do. It's continual intimidation. Because familiar spirits are all working over time to open the door for the gates of hell to break out. I prophesy to you that if you would hearken to what God is saying in this hour, then sin, sickness, disease, and death cannot come upon you. It will have to pass over you. When Jesus, when God sees the blood of the Son, His Son, He turns away from, from judgment and He brings the people back in restoration. I sense in my spirit that if you think seriously, the next pan pandemic will be on the area of finance, will be on the area of food shortage, will be on the area of education. All kinds of things are beginning to happen around the world. But I pray the Holy Spirit protect you and guide you and guard you. Win the favor of God quickly. Win the favor of God quickly. Win the, win the friendship of God. Let the friendship of God be over your tent so that in the days to come, nothing can hold you back. So many people have been frightened. Bring leaders back to slavery. Slavery to sin, slavery to sickness, slavery to darkness. But the Bible says that he, God is causing a new thing to happen. When Jesus arrived, he said, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Let me prophesy to you, the Spirit of the Lord God is going to be upon you when you use the anointing to heal the sick, cast out devil. Anointing is to get a job done. But the filling up of the Holy Spirit is the continual supply. The, the, Spirit, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And He has anointed me. When the Spirit of God comes upon you and the anointing that comes out of that interaction is so powerful that it can destroy the works of the gates of hell. I believe right now that new strength is coming. Lift your hands right now. Receive new strength, new courage, new freedom, new boldness, new convictions, new friends, new territories. Lord, I pray right now in Jesus' name that the Spirit of God will be so strong upon each one of our lives that when we leave tonight's meeting, it will be so sober, so deeply inclined to your presence. Lord, I pray right now that there will be a new generation that will rise up to honor you, please you, and serve you. Thank you, Lord, for this night. There will be a special night for us where we have shut down the doors of the enemy. There is no access code, access code denied. We want to live a sin-free life, devil-free life, oppression-free life. We are receiving it in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. You be blessed. You be blessed and let the Spirit of God come strongly upon you that this will be the beginning of your breakthrough. You're going to see sometimes demonic powers can try to do more, more harm than good because they are not good, they are harmful. I, I want you to just learn to rise up in your spirit. Can you do that? I'll see you next week, same time. But I'm going to talk to you about some important things, the spirit of deception, as well as the spirit of poverty. We're going to deal with it. All right? And you remember that. Spirit of poverty in the area of finance is a very dangerous situation. Because you'll be working and working and working and working because you feel there will not be enough then it puts you on overdrive and you get exhausted, you get intimidated, you, you become very hard to get along because you are frustrated, everybody will be frustrated around you. All right? So we will be praying for you, pray for me too. That next week I'll be stronger than, my voice will be stronger than ever before. But just give me some time, I'm going to get the devil out of the way for you, 
and the pathway of the spirit be created for your behalf. In Jesus' name, be blessed. Amen. Thank you, Papa, for this evening. Thank you. I hope that uh, as we take this message today, together with last week's message and put it together, you know, um, this is a very, very, very important, um, I wouldn't say a message, but I would say the voice of God to us because every day, the routine life that we live in, we live in a life and every day we have certain routines. We go to work, we wake up a certain time, we eat a certain time. All, those, all these routines, when there is, a no, there, there is no God factor, you would find the familiar spirits would actually sit in and we become more and more natural. We're never meant to live naturally. We're never, we are meant to live naturally, supernaturally. That means a natural part of our lives. That means when you talk to somebody, Jesus spoke to the woman at, where, at the well. He was just talking, but he was not just talking. He was doing a natural thing supernaturally. And I pray that as you listen to this, I, I, I really want to make an emphasis. And I want to say this, you know, these messages are coming to you at a very heavy price. Heavy price by being paid by Papa and Mom, physically, socially, I'm sorry, physically, mentally, emotionally. But he always pushes through. Every Tuesday is a miracle. And it is the reason, one of the reasons I feel Christianity has not moved in the power it's supposed to move because Jesus who paid the price. The people who are following him is not paying the same price. In the same way, I sense in my heart that we need to pay the same price that Papa and Mom is paying for us to make sure that this message becomes a reality. So with much soberness and seriousness, I pray that you take the last week's message and this week's message and put it together because if you really look at it from God's perspective, you can see that it is so vital for us to begin to connect it together so that we understand that the double decade of open heaven can start to flow. If you shut down the familiar spirit, you shut down the power of the prince of the air. That's the message tonight. If you shut down the spirit of intimidation, you shut it down, what will happen? You shut down the atmosphere. That means you create, you allow another atmosphere of heaven to infiltrate the place where you walk, where you talk, wherever you are, and where you are, heaven is there. So everybody, once again, I want to encourage you, and I want to beseech you by the mercies of God. Please, this message is not coming to you cheap. This message is not coming to you without a cost. It is coming to you with a heavy cost. So I pray that you and I will take it seriously. God bless you. And we're thankful to God for Papa Ma and Isaac, ANS, and everybody here. And have a good God bless you. Touch from the master's hands His touch so strong, complete Broken hearts and lives are healed His touch is all we ever Touch from the master's hands, his touch so strong, complete broken.
broken heart and lives are healed. His touch is all we ever need. Though the trials may come and the battle rages on, though broken yet may. Of his spirit soaring into new heights of his love. One touch from the master's hands, his touch so strong, complete. Broken hearts and lives are healed. Touch is all we ever need. One touch from the master's hands. His touch so strong, complete. Broken hearts and lives are healed. His touch is all we ever Is all we have.